let me give you my opinion how my journey has evolved from the beginning when I started being vegan uh, like six, seven years ago now. Then how I basically transition into more like plant-based diet and why I don't call myself vegan. Oh, welcome. Let's talk a little bit about veganism as a philosophy. If you are like me, you want to make this world a better place. You want to avoid unnecessary cruelty on the animals. You want to avoid making this planet worse place. And, you know, by polluting it, you want to avoid doing all the harm there is on this planet when it comes to, like, pollution and especially from the agriculture and these animal operations and so on and it's really really bad i mean many people don't realize how bad it is fishing in the oceans and so on so yeah i don't even realize it i have information from from some documentaries or whatever but it's still like just a snapshot of what's going on in there but um let me give you my opinion how my journey has evolved from the beginning when i started being vegan uh, like six seven years ago now then how i basically transition into more like plant-based diet and why i don't call myself vegan so the this idea for this video came actually from uh many of the conversations i have had over years with myself and with other people on the social media who I respect and they think in a similar ways. So I want to break apart some of the thought processes behind this, how to be the best person while still making the best decision for my health and best decisions for this planet. because. When you enter this vegan movement or vegan philosophy, you might have that um, idea that you need to exclude all the animal produce, all the animal products, uh, everything that has to do with animal industry, and this world will be perfect or almost perfect. And I think this is a huge misconception. I will explain why. When I started, I would, for example, never touch anything that had whey in it. So, for example, we have bread, and a loaf of bread has some whey in it. Maybe you go to bakery and they don't have all the ingredients listed there, right? And you see it? Okay, I don't know what all the ingredients there are, so I would choose not to eat it, not to buy it. Which is perfectly fine, but you know the problem becomes if you are in that situation that you are getting hungry, you are traveling or whatever, and there is no better option than something that contains maybe like one gram of whey or whatever. But because you have that standard that it needs to be perfect, it cannot contain anything that touched animal produce, you will not buy it. And they, of course, this is your personal choice. I'm not telling you that this is something bad if you choose to do so. And this is actually what switched for me over the years. I don't look at these things anymore as black and, as white, black and white as I used to. So before I would never touch it. Now I'm considering the situation. And I know once I asked this question actually on my Facebook page, like, let's say I have been eating only plant foods for six years. I had one egg, let's say three years into that journey. So have I been vegan for six years or did my vegan counter, quote unquote, start it again or reset it after I've eaten that one egg? No, and I live in a village. We have chickens. We have, you know, animals, and I don't agree uh, with keeping animals for meat. I think this is like huge waste of 
energy, it is huge, huge waste of uh, any potential that can be spent on growing plants or whatever. It's not necessary nowadays anyway, and it creates this cruelty for animals, right? But with chickens, I have a kind of different opinion. We have these chickens, they lay eggs, whatever we do. Some people feed those eggs back to those chickens. Your choice. Uh, we keep it, we eat it in very small quantities, right? But for example, if my grandmother makes a cake for me for birthday and there is some milk in it or some eggs in it, I will still eat it even knowing that it is there. Once again, before I would have never touched it. Nowadays, I, she knows that I don't want it. I'm not looking for it. But if she makes that effort and gives me, uh, makes me this cake herself, and I'm like, I will at least, you know, take a few bites of it to appreciate it. You know? And I know that not all of you will um, understand this or agree with me, and that is perfectly okay. I'm just giving you a different view on things because from my perspective is or veganism is about making the best decisions right i don't feel like i'm supporting like animal industry or cruelty if i have either accidental egg once a year or if i have that cake that my grandmother makes me for birthday and i know that there are people who will be like it's black or white, either or. So that's something to be aware of. And actually, what helps me to stick with my diet and excluding all the animal products, here is a tip for you. When I was like this strict vegan, or I labeled myself as a vegan, I must have all these vegan foods and everything, that is when. I started having these like psychological cravings for animal foods. Like I want to have that egg or meat or whatever it is. Even though I didn't really crave it like physiologically, but putting these boundaries or uh, not giving myself permission to have them created that wanting. And we, clearly know that <laughs> it's the ex same exact thing as with like binge eating or when you are dieting when, when you forbid yourself from eating something you are you we want to rebel against this right so if you want to actually stick with whatever you are doing so for example in this context is stick with the vegan diet give yourself permission to eat anything right don't put uh, these strict restrictions because sooner or later you will have that feeling like i want to rebel against these restrictions and then it will be a game of your willpower so instead if you just be free with it and make peace with it we are much more likely to stick with it because now it is about the decision and decisions are powerful thing so i say like no i don't want it not that i can't have it but i don't want it just say it out loud how does it feel for you i can't have it or i don't want to have it one thing is forbidden one thing is my own choice it comes from my inner um, from, from my inner self, right? From my values and so on. I don't want it. Okay, I don't want it. So that, that's something that I wanted to discuss with you today and give you some my perspective, view. That is why I also don't call myself vegan because that puts, for me personally, that kind of restriction and i know that 
it's not healthy for me and it even doesn't help me to eat vegan or plant-based. I remember this post by Ryan D. Andrews, who has been a very influential person on my path, veganism and making sense of all those things like how to eat healthy, how to take care of myself, my athletic performance, let's say body composition, eating for health, but also care about planetary health. And he was vegan himself and uh, he recently uh, or earlier this year shared this post uh, on his instagram which speaks exactly on this topic like how do you name your eating pattern and that is something that he's been struggling with as you can read also in his post here and i think he uh, brought up a really good idea like I'm a vegan leaning sustainability seeker aiming to minimize suffering throughout the food system so he is really plant-based he chooses to eat also animal foods sometimes because you know sometimes it is more sustainable depending on the circumstances and he proposes these three questions here what food makes you feel good in your body and in your soul and i would add to this question and in your mind because we know that some people choose to eat vegan not all of them of course because they have like eating disorders right so they like these kind of restrictions or they mask their disorders with vegan diet on the other hand this is not like a majority right but there are, there are a few what's the best quality food you can afford and source so the sources of your food of your diet will depend greatly on the context of course we in the third world countries we have we can choose right and depending on your income but again Eating vegan is very cheap if you stick to whole foods most of the time. And how do you honor the mutuality we experience with the rest of the planet and its living beings through your food choices? So I think uh, these questions are really good and will help you to determine to find your eating pattern without necessarily labeling yourself one way or the other so hopefully this was helpful for you and i just want to leave you with that kind of warning whatever you choose to eat or not to eat make sure that you are doing the best for yourself and that you honor your own uh, principles values and that you always evolve and stay flexible with your eating because i have had uh, quite a few clients who wanted to be a uh, vegan but their health conditions in that current time did not allow them specifically there were some digestive issues and these digestive issues led them to choose vegan diet because at first that diet solved their symptoms but because the symptoms or the core issue was not treated, they had to reduce the food choices. They had to fewer and fewer foods. And even vegan diet was not restrictive enough and not healthy enough for them. So first they needed to include or reintroduce animal products back into their diet to heal themselves, to heal their gut. And then they could work and get back to the vegan diet. So, you know, stay flexible. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care also of your physical and mental body. If you like this, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. And if you have any questions or topics that maybe you would like me to discuss, leave them down below in the comments. Have a great day.